Hello there everyone and welcome to Game Points episode 232. Your weekly little get together we talk about recent gaming news. I'm as always your host Stephen Brown. Joining me today is... I'm David. Tonight, David, uh, kind of a dry week. I'm going to go ahead and say it right now. We have how Immortals Phoenix Rising was essentially renamed because of Monster Energy Drink. GameStop could like... close even more stores. And the PS5 might have some supply issues or might not, depending on who you believe. We'll, of course, get more into that later. But first, I want everyone here to know that this is an audience interactive podcast. So if you're watching here live every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time here at Twitch TV slash Game Points, feel free to join in the conversation with whatever questions, comments, etc. you might have. And of course, if you can't join us live, feel free to watch episodes of the old show over at youtube.com slash Game Points PC. Regardless of where you're at, you know what streamers want when it comes to liking, sharing, favoriting, bits, subscriptions, all that good stuff. So if you like what you see here, feel free to spread the love. David. Yes. Over the weekend, and a little bit before then, on your recommendation, I ended up playing some of that Hyrule Warriors. Hell yeah. How'd that treat you, friend? That game is way better than it should be. Told you. Like, did, you yeah, get into, did you get into the ridiculous like extra modes besides just the main campaign? No, not yet. I'm not even done with the main campaign yet. There's a lot of game there. I mean, you you could stop. You can like because if you want more characters, you can do that and just go find other people. Because if you're playing with uh, in co-op, you're kind of limited on who you're playing as based on the campaign level. But okay. the second player can play literally anybody care any character you have unlocked. Okay, I I'm still enjoying what I have unlocked mm -hmm. so far. Uh, I see why you like Linkle a lot. Hell yeah! Actually, is very controls very nice. I think this might be one of the best warrior games I've ever played. Right? It's fantastic. I, I, I hate saying that because it, it, <laughs> it does one thing that I wish other words games did, and it lets me hop between different characters while I'm fighting. Yep. I don't think yeah. I've seen a Warriors game do that yet. There probably was one, but we probably skipped it. Yeah, we don't to play be, every single one fair. of them. We're not obsessive about them. Uh, if there is one, please let me know. But yeah, Dynasty uh, Hyrule Warriors, really goddamn good if you like, if you like that style of game. I cannot recommend like, it to like a casual audience at all. If you don't like mashing uh, square or X to attack things forever, then it is not going to work for you. Yeah, every it, it, it does have all the problems every Musu game has. So if mm -hmm. you're not into the repetitiveness of it, if you're not into just... I mean, let's face it, it, it is kind of bare bones gameplay, but goddamn, it's just... This, it's, it's like EDF. There's something it's, stupidly it, fun it, about it. It scratches an itch, for sure. Absolutely. One second, I'm about to cough. David, fill the show. No, okay. Well, uh, this week we don't have a whole ton of stuff to talk about because. Oh, Sorry no. about that. I I had just a frog in my throat. It was bad. I had to get rid of it. Yeah, you'll be fine. David, I have seen that you were playing Among Us a lot lately. Oh uh, yeah. How's that? How's that treating you? It's pretty fun. It's hard to get people to play that sometimes. Okay. Um, because you kind of need to have ten people. So I think I've only managed to do that like once. Yeah, you well, can play a, it with... it's, a duck, duck, uh, it's a deduction game, so minimum five at least, which is already hard to do on video games. Yeah, it's just depending, right? Um, and if you're just playing with strangers, it's easier to just jump in and get people. But I don't know. I think the interesting part is playing with people you know, so you can kind of accuse each other and do that whole fun thing. No, I agree. That That is uh, one of the reasons why I'm on it. It's the uh, it's the resistance vibe, you know, board game or the what is it? Ult Ultimate Werewolf, Ultimate Ultimate Werewolf, Werewolf. resistance, Secret Hitler, any yep, any the... kind of deduction game. Yep, all that. Very cool. But it's a video game. David, let's go ahead and get right into the news here. And starting off with this first news story, and the main reason why I haven't included it here is because I get to say I was right. <laughs> this is via TechRafter. Gods Classic. and Monsters renamed after Monster Energy Dispute. Now, you didn't call that part. <laughs> no, but I did say when they changed it, I bet... They <clears throat> Excuse me, still got the cough. When they changed it, I said, I bet they did this for copyright reasons, because Gods and Monsters is too generic of a name. It's the same reason why Space Marines and 40K are the Adaptus of Staris. It's why... Uh, why Biohazard couldn't be called Biohazard in America. It had to be called Resident Evil because Biohazard's mm. a too generic name. In fact, there was already a band called that. When you change names this far into development, it's not because of, of oh, we think this tests better. It's because there's an outside influence saying, you have to change this or it's going to cost you money. Yes. Now, while uh, I do know that that's why they did this, 
Can we talk about how ridiculous it is that it's to me this is the scrolls thing all over again. Yep. Like your trademark name is so fucking vague that you're just gonna call anybody that uses the word as infringing on your trademark, and it's just so goddamn harmony gold feeling. Yeah. Hey there, hey there, Fuse. How you doing? Good to see you. There's a, an internet lawyer, and I don't mean uh, Leonard French. He, Leonard French is awesome, but there's another internet lawyer called Richard Hogue, who <laughs> okay. also deals in copyright stuff, and he had this big video about it, talking about how essentially he believes that Ubisoft would have won their case, but that's not the point. The point is it would have costed time and money and resources, and it just gets to the point where it's just easier to change the name. Mm. So let's go ahead and go into the article itself. This is for you, Tech Raptor. Links, of course, will be provided down in the description of this video below. We believe that here at Tech Raptor, we have uncovered the truth why Immortals Phoenix Rising is a thing, and almost certainly due to your favorite or least favorite energy drink. The Gods of Monsters trademark was opposed by Monster Energy, who claimed it could cause confusion with almost all the trademarks, including Monster Army, Monster Energy Drink, and more. They state they believe their trademarks would be damaged by Gods of Monsters, stated on one point, on one part, quote, the opposer will be damaged by the registration of the applications in that application's mark, so that resembles the opposer's monster marks, including as registered PTO, which is the Patent and Trademark Office, and in which the opposer owns common law trademarks as likely to be likely when used on or in connection with applicants' goods and services as to cause confusion or to mistake or to deceive. That's a lot of fancy lawyer talk. It's saying, hey, they're naming this deliberately to confuse people with monster energy drinks. I fucking hate legalese so <laughs> so much because it's purposely written obtuse to yes. confused regular people yes. that's if you're ever thinking oh man maybe i'm just not smart enough to like understand this or like oh the legal system seems weird no it's because they wrote this specifically in a way so that you're not supposed to understand it so they can do whatever the fuck they want all the time correct it just drives me insane i can't yes. fucking stand it uh Long story short, Monster says, by naming your games Gods and Monsters, people might confuse it with our energy drink, and if your game sucks, it might make Monster look bad. Yeah, because that makes sense. Your video game that has nothing to do with what we make, manufacture, market, or brand uh, might confuse people into thinking that your video game is somehow, somehow it's Monster Energy Drink. Now, I don't have it Because here. you love Monster Energy Drink so much that you're going to run right out and buy a Ubisoft-made video game and then be mad when it doesn't live up to your monster drinking standards. I don't have it written here, but apparently Monster did make the claim that they're intimately tied to video game culture. So they have a, a claim to say that they can't name it Monster. I'll give you leeway on action sports <laughs> but other than that stay in your fucking lane boys ba Are back to serious? the <laughs> back to the article ubisoft opposed this by and large denying every allegation monster energy made aside from where do like to likely legal ground stating they had insufficient knowledge to admit or deny in one part of the opposition monster energy claimed that its marks were famous to which ubisoft said Ubisoft denies opposers' alleged marks are famous. In that filing. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps that is... more pertinently, Ubisoft also points out that there are many trademarks containing the word monster in a variety of catalogs, both internationally and federally. I just love how Ubisoft That's is hilarious. like, we don't legally believe monster is famous. Yeah. Also, wouldn't, wouldn't Universal have more of a right to the word monster than even Monster Energy does? Hey, uh, Mary the really estate of Mary Shelley, the estate of Mel Mary Shelley with Frankenstein's monster. I mean, come on. I'm just saying they've been having like monster movies and they had a whole monster universe that they were trying to boot. And, like, pretty sure they've owned that kind of copyright since the, what, 30s? It's been uh, Eric Fuse in chat brings up a good point. Who still drinks energy drinks? That said, I actually do like a sugar-free rock star every now and then. Um... So I guess I do. So for it really a very, is a late, a late 90s, early 2000 thing, though, isn't it? For a very brief amount of time, there were bangs in my house, which is one of the newer energy drinks that like gym rats are all over because it's like zero calories and zero carbs and zero sugar. And, and it just it's basically a over the counter sold pre-workout 
and it's like four cups of coffee. And I had one Jesus. and I thought my heart was going to explode. And I went, maybe I don't need these anymore. If I was God 16, damn. I'd be all over it. Uh, yeah, yeah. just like I said, when I have them, I, I don't even drink. I don't even drink of like alcohol or anything like so many people do. I just drink it straight. But it's got to be like specifically a sugar free one. Otherwise, I was going to say some much. of those. I, I know people that go to the gym and they'll have like a sugar free or slash zero calorie style energy drink. But even then, they're, I don't think they're drinking like mon monsters. and red Oh, I, I want to be perfectly clear. I'm not doing this because I'm going to the gym either. That being said, though, <laughs> if I am at a convention and they are handing out the tropical Red Bulls, I for sure those will are grab good. one. <laughs> I haven't had one in a while, but those are good. <laughs> David, like I said at the beginning, the reason why this story mainly is here, though, so I can say I was right. I said <laughs> that the reason why they changed a good name like Gods and Monsters or something stupid like Phoenix Rising or Immortals Phoenix Rising was because it had to have to do with some kind of weird copyright claim bullshit that because there are so many books, TVs, bands, whatever you can think of that have this name that somewhere along the line, someone filed some complaint about it. Uh, once again, you could take a look at that Richard Hogue video. I might try to see if I can track it down and link it. But if you look at virtual, lega virtual legality, that's the name of his yeah, channel. I bet it's really hard for him to find it considering he's telling you to Google it. <laughs> Uh, go there, take a look at it, and it breaks it down. But one of the big points he also makes, too, is that it is, one, the reason why it, the, the name is spelt so stupid is because it's way easier to defend something with an intentional misspelling in it. Yep. Two. Makes sense. There's a good chance this Monster Energy Drink was not the first claim, but just the one that finally broke the, the camel's back. Because See, that knows, is more believable. It's who like knows anybody that had anything related to monsters started throwing yep. lawsuits. Yep. And by the time it got to Monster Energy and getting in, they're just like, it is not worth the time and effort to fight all of these in court, even though we know we'll win. Just change the goddamn name. Mm -hmm. And that's how copyright trolls operate. Basically. Uh, David? Yes. While we're on the topic of Ubisoft stuff, let's go ahead and move into the next news story. And we talk about the Ubisoft forward that happened last week. Now. That's true. There was one of those going to be a comprehensive list of everything that was shown off there for example we got updates on Watch Dogs legion hyperscape tom clancy's elite squad this is all stuff that we knew about i don't want to get into that there are three things i want to talk about though one is the gameplay trailer for immortals phoenix rising what was your first thought of it that game looks so Okay, hold on. Let me back up and say this nicer. I think I think <laughs> I, I think I know what you're gonna say. That uh, okay. Just say it. It's so fucking Ubisoft. Oh <laughs> my god, that is the most Ubisoft ass Ubisoft looking fucking video gamey video game I have ever seen in my life. It is. Hey guys, we're Ubisoft. You know how we make open world games that have way too much stuff to do, and you're gonna go around and you're probably gonna call, crawl on top of tall things, and you're gonna see some kind of vision radius. I guarantee you that's in here because this is Ubisoft the video game, which sucks because conceptually, I think it's awesome. Like you the know, idea behind it, like sticking with like the gods and monsters idea and the fact that, you know, you're playing like this character and you're dealing with all this like mythology stuff and it could be really, really cool. But looking at it, I think I know exactly how those 40 to 60 hours of my life would go and that the game would be great if it was 12 hours. So I actually do kind of want to play this. I'm not like hyped up for it. I think it's going to be a great December game. It does come out early December. I, mean, I saw I think, this. I think it has that. I mean, it's going to be a great game to sink your teeth into. And it'll have, I'm sure, tons of content and tons of stuff to do. And if it's like your holiday game, because there's plenty of people to get, you know, one big game for the holidays. I'm sure this will this will work, right? You won't get bored of it in two seconds. Yeah, I, I, I'm in that boat. And the main reason why I want to play this is because this thing screams Ubisoft. It, it screams Ubisoft game for sure. Mm -hmm. But it, sound, it, it is as if Ubisoft wanted to make Breath of the Wild. And if they can give me a Breath of the Wild without breakable weapons, <laughs> I think I'm really going to enjoy this game. Now, see... I know that we've been making that Breath of the Wild like comparison, but I don't think that's what it's gonna 
play like. I, I, it kind of has an aesthetic similarity, but I don't know that it's going to feel like that game. I don't know, man. W- watching some of the gameplay to this, I uh, it, it really reminds me of Breath of the Wild. It really does. All right, that's, that's just fair. that's just my my take on it. I know that's not a a rare take. That is what a lot of the gaming outlets have been saying too. Is that this seems to be a lot like Breath of the Wild? But that's the first thing I saw when I saw this gameplay trailer. Too. I was like, all right, cool. I'm into it. I definitely like it. Uh, chat is asking about Ready for Innovation, New Far Cry. It's, it's, it seems like chat overall is kind of agreeing with the whole Ubisoft idea. We've gotten to the point where if we say Ubisoft the video game, everyone knows what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, but that being, like I said, it's it's definitely going to be a big open world game. And it's just, I'm, I can't get into them. I, we've had this discussion numerous times on the show. It's come up a few times. I have not beaten any open world video game since the fourth saints row i would argue that's not because you can't get into them i would argue because i I know how you play them that you get too into them yeah i i have an issue with games that have too much depth because i can't continue and i'll just get lost on side quests and i'll be 30 hours into a video game and i don't have a ton of free time anyway so i'll just be like I'll set this down because I've been playing this for a while and I'll go play something else and then I'll just never touch it again. Because you get you get possessed with that idea of like, shit, I don't remember where I was at. I don't know what I'm yeah. doing. And even I though I never over. bothered to get even a quarter of the way through the storyline, so I don't actually beat anything. I'm like, well, I mean, I played it for 30 hours, so I think I get a good idea of what that game's about. Right. And by the time I'm like, oh man, I should play that game and I go to look through my library and it's like last played three years ago and I'm like, oof. I don't even remember the controls. Like, yeah, that, that's my big problem when I get back to a game that I haven't touched in years because it's always at like the halfway point, meaning the game is now at a advanced quote unquote stage where you need to know what every controller is. So if you forget that you can wall jump or something like that, you're fucked. Dude, well, you know what's funny is the most recent open world game that I can think of that I am the furthest in, I am at the final boss, I think, or close to in Mad Max. That's a good game too. Yeah, but when did that come out? Years, years ago. Years ago. Yeah. Two thousand. Forever. Two thousand. Two thousand forever ago. I have no idea how to play that video game. I remember I liked it. I thought that game was great. Tons of fun. Never beat it. You know what I did like about Mad Max a lot while on this topic is the fact that it was an open world that was relatively empty, but empty in a way that fit the tone and the setting yeah. of that game. Also, that game had fantastic car combat, and I was just into driving around and customizing my car and just collecting all the cars and that's one of the few games where i did a lot of side quests but still had just enough drive to keep going to the next place Mm -hmm. no mad Mad max was really good there were two more things from the ubisoft war that i want to mention first a the second one is prince of persia remake cool now did you ever play the original prince i don't want to say the original prince of persia because that was like back (laughs) in the 80s but did you play stands of time I did play the original Prince of Persia, but no, I did not play the 3D ones. <laughs> okay, so this means nothing to you uh, then. I know, you a lot of people, I know a lot of people are excited about it. A lot of and... people are also taking umbrage with the way it looks. Yeah, it, it, looks, re- it has kind of a weird vibe. It does look a little bit dated, but there's a reason for that. Uh, there mm. was an article that came out that were interviewing the development team behind it. They're like, hey... We've seen some other game remakes lately, and they're all 4K visuals. Like, think Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3, stuff yeah. like that. And they're like, why doesn't your game look like that? Like that? And they straight up said, it's because of the engine it's running on. It was meant for open worlds. This is an open world game. And furthermore, Prince of Persia, The Sentence of Time, the whole bailiwick about it is rewinding and fast forwarding and traveling through time. You're kind of like scrubbing through a VCR there's a track lot, almost. There's a lot more going on in the game, so they yes. have to make sacrifices in the engine, which means the graphics take a little bit of a hit. That but is the main reason why it doesn't cares? look as visually good. And I'm in the same boat. I don't care. Dude, that whatever what we were talking about it last week, that like hot blood racing or hot shot racing or whatever that came out. So I'm super into that game. That game oh, looks like trash. The, uh, the one that looks like Daytona USA or Virtual Hell yeah. Racer. Yeah, I can't remember what it is either. But yeah, so like, I, I don't need the fanciest graphics in the world. I'm yeah, I'm not a graphics or either. Gameplay comes first. You can have the most amazing looking game, but if it sucks, it sucks. And you can have the one of the a two bit color grayscale like Ober Den and have it become one of my favorite games yep. of all time. As long as the game runs smoothly and has a stable frame rate, I'm I'm fine with it. If it yeah, looks a little worse than everything else and 
also runs really poorly and is like stuttery or has graphical issues, then ah, come on, guys. But we will, of course, be finding more about that as it goes on. And then finally, one more game I want to talk about in the Ubisoft forward. And I'll let you take this one over. Hell Scott yeah. So this Pilgrim has been versus the world, the complete edition. This has been teased for a long, long time. Uh, Brian Leo Manny Malley is the guy that penned the comic book, Scott Pilgrim, which then went into a whole movie that just had like a 10 year anniversary. And when that movie came out, there's a game that came out on the 360 and PS3 called Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, which was a 2D side scrolling beat em up, total retro throwback with an amazing soundtrack by Anna Monaguchi. And it was shit tons of fun. One of my favorite side scrolling beat em ups. Uh, and the problem is, is that as soon as we hit next gen, that game ceased to be. It was pulled from the stores. You couldn't download it. There's some we kind of licensing why? issues. And the crazy thing is, is it had nothing to do with the music because the comic creator and the person that made all the music has been saying, why haven't we released this yet? It's literally been Ubisoft holding onto it this hmm. entire time. I see. I yeah. always thought it was a music thing. Uh, yeah, well, side scroll. So think like Final Fight, uh, Double Dragon, the, the Simpsons, X-Men, Welcome to Die game, all that good stuff. Turtles in Time. Turtles in Time, Battletoads, it, old Battletoads. It, King it, of Dragons, anybody? I played it I, I played it real quick, but I never actually finished it. It sounds like you really enjoyed it, though. Yeah, I, I beat the hell out of that game. That game was awesome from start to finish, in my opinion. I will be buying this. It's not even a remake. It's just a re-release on current gen. Uh, the complete edition does have, and this might interest you, uh, DLC DLC characters in the form of Knives Chow is now playable. She was not in the original. And so is the roommate, Wallace Wells. I do like Wallace. I know you do. By, by far um, my favorite character in that entire thing. By default, you can play as Scott, Ramona, and then... What the hell's his name? I know it's Kim, but the, who's the lead singer of the band? Is it Styles? Yeah. Steven Styles. Steven Styles, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Steven, what was that guy's name? Because I can't remember it. <laughs> it's on the tip um, of your tongue there, David. Right, right, and stuff. But yeah, I absolutely adored that game. I'm very excited to play again. The soundtrack, like I said, is flipping awesome. Uh, Paul Robertson did all the art and animation. That guy's, that guy's great. And I'm just excited for it. Is it four-player co-op or? Hell yeah, it's four-player okay. co-op. Okay. I did kind of scroll through a long play of the game. It looks like it'll take you about two hours to get through the entire yep. thing. So it is a quick game, but most beat em ups are. Uh, I, can't... I, I remember playing this back in the day locally, so I don't know if it has online support. I'm hoping it does, uh, but I guarantee it'll have some kind of couch co-op. So you'll have that going at least. Right. I know it's coming out sometime holiday. Do we have an exact day or is it just a generic holiday? Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. Okay. Probably just generic holiday, if I'd have entered a guess. If it actually had a release date, I would have likely have written it down here. But if this it does is have the kind one, of thing that Limited Run brings out a physical release for like Nintendo Switch, where they actually give you like the, the box for the cartridge and everything, I'll probably pick it up. Just because. What is Limited Run Games doing lately? And I'll have to look about that. That's that's a question for another day. Limited I love Run if you don't know still... who Limited Run Games is, by the way, take a look at them. They're awesome. Hell yeah, they're still doing exactly what they do. You just maybe haven't been interested in anything they've been releasing. David, I'm going to move us into the next topic here. And the only reason why I'm even bringing this up is because a bunch of people are pissed off about this. But this strikes me as like a no-brainer. And I don't get... I, I will say up front, I do not know why people are pissed off about this. This made sense to me when I first heard it. And it's not a surprise as the way it's going. But there is a, a hubbub about this particular mm. thing. The next story um, comes... Ignorant people are ignorant? Yeah, it could be. This next story comes via Video Games Chronicle. Uh, the Xbox Series S won't run Xbox One versions of backwards compatible games. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You skipped a very important Xbox the... Series X won't run Xbox One X versions of backwards compatible games. Okay, there you go. I, I, did, I did say it wrong because the entire naming convention for these next-gen Xboxes is a tongue twister to me. Yes, um, it is now a toss-up on who is absolutely worse at naming systems. Is it Microsoft or is it Nintendo? Nintendo had the lead for a while by going from the Wii and then making the Wii U and giving everybody a reason to have no idea what system they needed to buy games for. They also did the most just ridiculous thing of making a new Nintendo 3DS, which still makes my blood boil to this day. That being said, Microsoft going Xbox One 
Xbox One X, Xbox One S, and then Xbox Series S and Xbox Series X, when S and X are similar phonetically, and the entirety of the names are just almost the same damn thing, is so aggravating that I really feel for literally anybody who has to work in retail this holiday season. The last, like, 30 people that still work at a GameStop and have to answer the phone and talk to a parent who's saying, do you have the Xbox One or the Xbox Series? And they're like, which one? And people have no idea, and it is just... Just wait until they decide to come out with the next console, which is going to be the Xbox Series SX 33 over and a half days 2.0 final series console it's remix. It's just so ridiculous. Okay, so let's actually talk. Dude, thank right. you. If they just called it the Xbox the Xbox 720, I would have been fine with it. We could be going up that way. I, I, I was they personally didn't... hoping they just would have called it the Xbox. Just and then they... the Xbox. Like, V could be part of the name, not just Xbox, but the no, Xbox. No, screw that. Get your, get your, like, Fast and Furious naming conventions the hell out of here. Just number it or year it. And I know you didn't want to make an Xbox 2, because if you had made an Xbox 2 instead of the Xbox 360, then technically your console would have seemed like it was one behind because it was competing against the PlayStation 3. I understand that. But now you've made, like, 10 of these fucking Xboxes, and you're Microsoft, so you could just call it something else. Or take, like, ideas from the graphics card community. This is the Xbox 1080. I don't give a shit. Just think of better names. From the article. <laughs> Microsoft's lower-end next-gen console, the Xbox Series X, will not run Xbox One X versions of backwards-compatible games the company has confirmed to VGC. The console will instead run Xbox One S versions of the Xbox One and Xbox 360 titles with some of its own enhancements, including the auto HDR and, quote, more consistent frame rates. A Microsoft spokesperson said Xbox Series S was designed to be the most affordable next-generation console and play next-generation games at 1440p at 60fps. To deliver the highest quality backwards compatible experiences consistent with the developer's original intent, the Xbox Series S runs the Xbox One S version of the backwards compatible games while applying improved texture, filtering, hiring more consistent frame rates, faster load times, and auto HDR. Long story short, no shit, it's not going to run older games as well as the Xbox Series X will. How well, did we not know this? Or wait, how, wait, 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 how do people wait, 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 know wait, this? Wait, 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 hold on. I want to make sure that you're reading your own article. Okay. This article is not saying that the Xbox Series S will not run Xbox Series X versions of backwards compatible games. This article is specifically stating the Xbox Series S won't run Xbox One X versions yes. of backwards that, compatible. That still so makes that still makes sense new, to me. The new gen will not play the best version of last gen. Yes, that still makes sense to me. Okay, just because the way you were phrasing it, you kept comparing the Series S to the Series X, and I know we just had an argument about these stupid fucking names. You're right. But I just want to make sure that we are clear. The new ones are the Series consoles. Yes. There is an S and an X. The X version is the higher tier one. What and thank you for making that clear. In my mind, it makes perfect sense, but because of the naming convention to these things, I cannot say it correctly. Yes. Now we also have the current gen. So not the new ones that are not out yet, but the current one. You can go buy at the store right now, which is the one, the Xbox One, that also comes in the flavor of S and X, with again, the X being the higher tier one. This is saying that the new one that is not out yet, that's the lower tier, won't be backwards compatible as good as the old higher tier one. So which the... seems strange in that it is newer technology, but as we've mentioned a number of times, this is the new cheap box. It doesn't even have a disk drive, and it's I don't even think more powerful than an Xbox One X. We've gone over the numbers. This thing is just made to be a cheap, affordable video game console that will run next gen games because of the way Microsoft is doing their games release schedule in if you are looking to buy a Microsoft game, literally all four of these fucking multiple hundred dollar boxes play all of the same video games. Yes. So none of it matters. What we need to do is stop looking at this as breaks. Microsoft is doing something unusual with how they're running the, ne the next generation here. When you would normally have next generation, I'm going to do, do this kind of visually so you can see it. You would have current gen, next gen, previous gen underneath here so you would have like striations so think like a sedimentary rock right you would see clear striations of what's going on horizontal yeah. lines 
I mean, I don't think anybody could summon up better when we had the Nintendo, and then we had the Super Nintendo. What Microsoft it's like a Nintendo only Super. <laughs> what Microsoft is doing here now is adding a vertical line through those horizontal lines, and now you have two columns. So you have the Series S stuff and the Series X stuff, and they are partitioned into two separate categories now. Yep. So what Microsoft here has done is not just separate uh systems by generation but they have separated them by well series now as well well it's the, it's the um the x's will go with the x's the s's will go with the s's and that is something we just have to keep in mind from here on out the s series is the toyota version of the microsoft game console while the x series is the lexus just think it's 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 got an x in it like a lexus it's the fancier one yeah if that helps at all. <laughs> it it kind of uh, does. I think we just need to... I think we the need to make I think about this, the more I get why people are kind of salty about it. we have to bring up Microsoft, we just display on the stream. <laughs> I, I get why people are a little salty about this, but to me, this just always made sense to me because that just seemed yes. how they were going with this to begin with. But when I was trying to say it out loud and given how confusing this shit is... Yeah. I can understand now why some people would be upset at this. At first, I was like, I don't get it. I don't understand. I have a PC. Why am I dealing with all this? <laughs> right? Why, why do I have to anyway? bother with like, all this bullshit? None of this matters. Dude, none of these systems, uh, none of the new systems, rather, have an optical out. Did you know that? No, I didn't. They pulled the optical, optical audio out out of the new boxes. Now, to be and fair, it, I think you and I and maybe five other people were the only assholes that used optical out. I don't care because... Because <laughs> you used all, it. No, here's the thing. All of the arguments that I get, and I try not to get into too many online because, you know, the problem with arguing with an idiot is they'll drag you down to their level and beat you with experience, is... <laughs> Sorry, I've never heard that before. This is the same arguments I got when Apple decided to pull the headphone jack out of phones, and that managed to trickle over to the other side of the aisle to Android. And now new Android phones also are missing a headphone jack. Oh, are you fucking I don't me? I didn't give a shit that a lot of people are adopting wireless headphones. I don't care at all. My wired MDRs sound better than your fucking Beats by Dre, so you can suck a butt and give me a goddamn phone with an audio jack. Much like, as great as audio can be over HDMI, my current audio system does not support the new HDMI version. And no, I am not going to buy an adapter. And no, I am not going to spend thousands of dollars buying a new audio rig. Just give me a fucking optical audio out and be done with it. <laughs> Man, I'm just really mad. I, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> one, I didn't know that about the Android phones because that shit's infuriating because I do not want to go into this fucking wireless earbud thing. Two, I didn't know that neither one of the new consoles were also not going to have optical a uh, optical audio either. Yeah, they're all they're all doing uh, audio through HDMI. And yes, I understand if you want to comment about how you can get fancy audio and they're all still Dolby Atmos or THX or, or whatever. I don't care. It doesn't plug into what I have now, <laughs> so shut it, <laughs> Ignis. I didn't live in a country that rebelled against King George III just for us to have some poor Chinese dude build our iPods for like a pennies on the dollar and then throw themselves off the roof. So you can take this, you can take this call me a commie crap and you just do something with it because I'm not clever also, enough to think about what you can do with it. Also, because <laughs> I'm also trying to read the scrolling chat at the same goddamn time. Don't <laughs> don't worry about the wireless bud producers on my account because I am a complete asshole and I have like three different sets of wireless headphones to go with my very many pairs of wired headphones because I have a problem. Yeah, you do. It's like shoes, but with headphones. <laughs> David, let's go ahead and move on to this next topic. This is going to get a little bit dry. But I'm kind of intrigued by this specific topic Cause, because cause this we last have, thing wasn't dry. <laughs> fair enough. But here we have one Bloomberg on one side reporting this is what's happening. And then on the other side, we have Sony saying, no, it's not. And they're both kind of calling each other a liar without actually calling each other liars. So first up, article from Bloomberg headline. Sony is said to have cut PS5 target by 4 million due to chip woes. 
Long story short, they're saying, hey, we're not going to be making... Bloomberg is alleging that Sony has reduced their production run of the place the, the initial PlayStation 5s. From okay. the article. Sony Corp has cut its estimated PlayStation 5 production for this fiscal year by 4 million units down to around 11 million following production issues with the custom designed system on chip for the new console, according to people familiar with the matter, aka anonymous sources. The Tokyo-based electronics giant in July boosted orders of suppliers in anticipation of heightened demand for the gaming this holiday season and beyond, as people spend more time at home due to the coronavirus. But the company has come up against manufacturing issues, such as production years as low as 50% for its SOC, which have cut into its ability to produce as many consoles as it wishes, said people who were wished to remain anonymous because of deliberations aren't public. Years have been gradually improving, but has yet to reach a stable level, they added. Sony shares went down as much as 3.5% in the wake of this news. So, that's a lot of tech speak to say Sony's having problems built, building the microchips that are going to fit the PlayStation 5, so they're much, cutting expected units. So, what this article is saying is much like the rumors that we've had for the last, like, 98 weeks of quarantine or COVID, or however the hell long this shit has lasted, people are worried about the production ability of the factories that manufacture all the silicone and stuff that goes inside the next-gen consoles. And since, you know, people are working from home and all this other stuff's going on, it may be difficult to mass-produce new video game consoles Correct. when a lot of these buildings are also manufacturing the silicone that goes in all the new phones and all this other stuff, and they are kind of fighting over the same resources and yada, 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 blah, blah. So we've had those rumors going on and on and on for the last three years. Um, but the entire time we've been assured by both Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo and Apple and Samsung and whoever the hell else that everything's fine. We're going to have plenty. It'll be great. Don't worry about it. And that's um, brought us to here where we get a report from Bloomberg, which is based on secondhand insider information, right? It, sa it, says, inside, it says source of people familiar with the matter is, is what the sources are. Anonymous sources from inside Sony, essentially. So from this guy's uncle that works in Nintendo, he says <laughs> yes. Sony has cut the production run of the system from 15 or 15 million down to 11 million. That being said, if they make 11 million, that's still better than... Remember when the PS3 came out? Remember how many of those North America I do got? not remember. I was hoping you would know off the top of your head. 500,000. Fuck me. You remember why it was impossible to buy a PlayStation 3 when those came out? Yeah. Yeah, I guess Five that's why. Hundred thousand. That's right, because they were trying to focus on the Japanese market, so US only got like a very small number when it came out. Five hundred thousand. I do remember that. <laughs> Sony <laughs> burned into my brain. The next story is via games industry related to this. Sony has come out and essentially said this blue book article is full of shit. Yeah. From the games industry biz article. Sony has reached out to GameIndustry.biz with the following statement denying the Bloomberg report. Uh, David, it's important to once again mention, companies rarely come out and say, that's not true. They will normally say, no comment. Can we talk about my favorite part of this, though, is that Sony reached out to GamesIndustry.biz and not Sony has reached out to Bloomberg. Yeah. <laughs> Can't they just call Jason Trier? The dude works there now. Quote from Game Industry. While we do not release details, or the quote, quote from the statement sent to GameIndustry.biz, rather. There you go. While we do not release details related to manufacturing, the information provided by Bloomberg is false. We have not changed the production number for PlayStation 5 since the start of mass production. End quote. David, I want to highlight one part here. Is it since the start and when did they start? Absolutely. Because you know they didn't start in February. Nope. So this, as it says right here, I, See, Sony is a, saying Bloomberg is lying. Because they can both be right. Yeah, Bloomberg but they can both be right here. Bloomberg is accusing Sony of having recently reduced its target production numbers of the PlayStation 5 from 15 million to 11 million. Yes. Sony is coming back and saying, we didn't change the production number. That Since could also the mean start that, of mass production. That could also mean that maybe back in February, they were going to make 15 million. But then about two months ago or 70 weeks into quarantine, they said, maybe we should cut that back a little. And now they've started production and it's still at 11 million, which it has been for at least three years. Which brings us to the topic we mentioned earlier about how legalese is bullshit and they deliberately use language in such a way that is meant to make things unclear. Because this shit is imprecise. It's very, it's precise to the point where it might not even necessarily make any sense of what's going on here. You say since the start of mass production. Okay, cool. Well, what was it? Give us the numbers. 
Well, we don't talk about details related to manufacturing. That means you're full of shit, Sony. Because remember, yep. if the numbers are good, a company won't shut the fuck up about them. True. If if Sony was like, we have 15 million consoles ready to go day one and we have hit our production quotas, they would be talking about that nonstop. They wouldn't shut the would fuck up about it. And we would just be in their comments saying, yeah, but how much does it cost the yeah. whole time? But since they're not releasing those details, that means, in my opinion, uh, the Bloomberg article is 100% correct and Sony is trying to do damage control because they took a hit to their stock on, the, on this. Mm-hmm. remember kids out there it is not what the company says you need to pay attention to it is what they don't say and when they don't give you numbers it is bad <laughs> bad David why don't you go ahead and lead us off on this next topic here hey this next story is from IGN and um, surprising almost nobody there was a leak well maybe the leak's not was surprising to a couple people. There was a leak for Oculus Quest 2. New headset and details. Again, from IGN, the Oculus Quest 2, which is the portable, doesn't need to be plugged into a computer version of the Oculus headset, which is a VR headset, just covering my bases, uh, has leaked, revealing a new look, higher quality display, 6 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, and more. The Facebook Blueprint website, ugh, have to talk about that currently lists the quest 2 alongside a three minute introductory video another trailer has been removed but has been reposted on youtube because once it's out there you can't delete it uh these videos reveal a number of features of the upgraded all-in-one vr headset coming in a white color scheme the headset features a new display with over 50 percent higher pixel de- density than quest at almost 2k resolution per eye it's smaller and lighter than the original, and the controllers have been given a tweak to improve ergonomics. No price or release date has been listed at the time of writing. David, the one thing you need to know about the Oculus Quest is that Facebook has openly said if you if you provide false information on their sign-up stuff when you make your account, they can just take away all of your access to the VR. So if you don't give them like your real name, your real address, your real phone number, what your primary email address is, they could just lock you out of VR. If you don't know what the product is that you're getting from a company the product is you yes and that is facebook Facebook in a nutshell facebook just wants all of your information yep so they can sell it to china as much as (laughs) as much as i would want to like like i love the idea the oculus quest is wireless i love that i think that's where we need to go the oculus quest was the very tippy top of my list of vr headsets to get for for a long while because you can play it completely standalone, and a lot of the games that will like kind of show off VR as a concept work without being touched attached to anything. You can play Beat Saber, you can play uh, Super Hot, you can play just you know all those kinds of games, uh, the stand around do stuff games. But the Quest also had that cool cable that you could plug into your PC and use your PC hardware to actually play some of the more legitimate VR games, which is cool and sounds awesome. And then we had the whole story that. Yes, we've known that Facebook has owned Oculus for quite a while now, and starting, I think, what was it, October or something? In order to use or access your Oculus Quest or any of the Oculus products, you have to have a Facebook account linked to your Oculus account. Oculus accounts are going away entirely, so you will only use Facebook to buy games, to play the games, to post on your social media from the video game like oh my god can you imagine targeted ads in vr because that's 100 percent where they're going yep i fucking hate it you go to load up some random vr game that's free and it just starts showing you shit you can buy on amazon when the guy who originally created the oculus palmer lucky is coming out saying don't fucking buy this thing anymore (laughs) you know something's gone horribly wrong it just bumps me out. I think the Quest is a really cool idea, and normally I'd be really excited for this because I think VR is pretty damn rad. Yeah, same here. And the thing we need is we need an affordable, mass-marketable VR headset so that we can have more people try VR because once it has a higher saturation point, more people will be interested in making games for it, which means we'll get more better and better games. Uh, my problem, we've talked about this before, is that a lot of games are kind of the stand-and-do-a-thing VR experience where you're not really playing a game so much as you're playing, I don't know, any arcade rail shooter from the 90s. A lot of stuff is still like that, and there's a lot of uh, walking simulators for it. Nothing that requires a lot of stuff going on. Mm-hmm. 
I don't want to say they're so easy to develop, but for for VR, they're definitely easier. So yeah, uh, Oculus Quest Two, it's coming, cool, but it's Facebook related, so that essentially means this thing is completely DOA to me. If I were to buy a VR headset, which I might early next year for a PC, it's still going to be the Valve Index at the moment. Hell yeah, which uh, I think still has the best controller. Yeah, that the 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 full pan grip thing. Yep. I can't remember. There's there's a phrase for it, full articulation. I think. I- I don't know. I just know that you can flip off head crabs in Half-Life Alex, and that's enough for me. David, <laughs> we have a couple of delayed games coming up. Oh uh, no! Yeah, a couple, couple delays, a couple delays announced. First, No More Heroes Three has been delayed to the surprise of no one. Suda. Yep, Suda Fifty One coming out saying, "Quote to everyone that's been waiting for further news and release date confirmation ever since the reveal of the trailer for No More Heroes Three at the TGA at the end of 2019, I'd like to offer my sincerest apologies." All staff members at Grasshopper have been working as hard as possible on developing the game in hopes of releasing it in 2020, but the effects of COVID-19 pandemic have unfortunately proven to be a real blow, body blow to our schedule, causing unforeseen delays in development. Now that we have managed to get back on our feet with development, we have dedicate, decided to focus on priori- prioritizing quality and, therefore, and to therefore push back the final release date. Cool. Uh, not really unexpected since I haven't heard anything else from this game since they announced it so that's yeah. not surprising also Suda's delayed a, Suda's a cool guy though yeah he is he's a good guy also delayed kenna bridge of spirits this got some traction because i believe it was shown off in conjunction with the reveal of playstation 5 yeah so this was from the ps5 game sizzle reel thing that happened mm-hmm. i don't even know ago it reminded me a lot of cameo which was an xbox 3 xbox 360 launch title from rare i believe Man, I have never heard of that video game in my life. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, if you see the cover, I'm willing to bet you would recognize it. Because it sure. was one of like four games to actually launch with the Xbox 360. I think it was the 360 anyways. This From game the- looked pretty cool, but it wasn't the game I originally thought it was. So Right. From the developers of Kenna Bridge of Spirits. This year has brought many challenges to our tra- in our trans... Let me start over. This year has brought many challenges, and our transition to working from home has caused development to move slower than we hoped. For this reason, we have made a difficult decision to delay the release of Kenna Bridge of Spirits to Q1 2021. While we have not made this decision lightly, but we feel it's best for the game and the well-being of the team. We will use this time to give the game polish it deserves and deliver an experience that meets our visions and your expectations. Delayed for the same reasons No More Heroes was. And once again, not really all that surprising. Uh, because we just didn't hear anything about this game. And it's not a PlayStation 5 exclusive. I believe it is cross-gen. This close to what it was supposed to be launched. Not seeing any gameplay or anything on it. I'm not surprised here. It's been delayed out until next year. Any thoughts on delayed games there, David? I think it's the general stuff that we both kind of agree with. Uh, take your time. They didn't have any release dates for them, so I'm fine with it. A rushed game is always bad. A delayed game can be good. Whatever something famous. Whatever bad. that Nintendo dude said. Yeah. We got two more quick stories I want to bring up real quick before we move into new releases. We'll go through this pretty quick. First thoughts from CNN. GameStop's closing hundreds of more stores. Hundreds. Hundreds. Well, the headline says hundreds because they're combining what they're closing right now and then some stuff later. Yeah. GameStop is closing about 100 more stores than originally planned with the struggling retailer warning of more closures next year. The company said Wednesday's earning call that between 400 and 450 stores globally will close this year, which is more than 320 stores GameStop originally said in March they were planning to shutter. That's a shit ton of stores. It is. I can think of like four or five in our local area that are just gone now, as of right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, they but were at GameStop- one point in time there was like eight of them yeah as someone who worked in the video game retail industry in this specific area for a while it sucked having like 20 different competitors within a mile of you yeah it was it was oversaturated in 20 in 2006 it just got more so later on yep uh it sucks but as we established game as we talked about gamestop was already suffering some major problems there's a reason why you go in there and it's like half video game merchandise now as opposed to actual video games they were already facing some major issues before a uh before covid hit and covid just wiped them out hard despite the Are game never gonna merge with hot topic i keep saying that's the move despite Turn games selling a lot this year because of covid no one's actually going into brick and mortar stores to buy them they're all buying them online and digital so this sure. is 
I didn't see GameStop lasting much longer to begin with. This is just going to accelerate that problem. Finally, as far as news goes, we have this via Engadget. Console Wars documentary arrives on CBS All Access September 23rd. Now, if you don't know, Console Wars is a book written by Blake Harris that details the fight between Sega and Nintendo in the late 80s to early 90s. This book mainly takes the focus on the Sega side of things, about how they actually were able to take the market share away from Nintendo for a year or two, and how mystery, uh, over-management for the Japanese side of Sega kind of fucked over the American sales of Sega. And it, it's interesting to watch. For example, the, uh, the CEO of Sega of America at the time was really pushing hard to get Sega of Japan to sign off on, hey, guess what? This deal between Nintendo and Sony fell out, and they're turning to us, and they want to make a console with us. We should make this console. And Sega of Japan said, no, we don't need Sony. Yeah. And then Sony went on to make the PlayStation, and Sega now just does third-party games. Things like that. It, gets, it, it goes into mainly the uh, Sega side of things. That documentary will be on CBS All Access September 23rd. What's funny is I was really interested in this until it was on CBS All Access, and then I went, eh, I don't need that in my life. Fair enough. I do recommend reading the book Console Wars. Console Wars, however. Yeah, I ain't gonna pay for an app though to see a documentary. That doesn't sound fun. <laughs> Fair enough. David, there's something you wanted to mention before we get into upcoming events. Things I would uh, pay for though. Uh, so, someone I like to mention a lot on this show, Steven Spawn, who is the oof, C O O C. He's an acronym title at <laughs> Able Gamers. If you have no idea what they are, they're a a video game com well okay hold on they are an accessibility company no they're they're charity they're they're not even really a charity they are yeah no they are they're a 501c3 charity okay well i'm gonna call them an organization with the end goal of making video games accessible for everybody and Steven Spawn is a pretty cool guy i think that was diagnosed with several illnesses um and he's pretty upfront about it. He rolls around in a wheelchair and talks frequently about how he was told as a young child that he had weeks to live. And he is turning 40. Right. He is also the COO, which I believe stands for Chief Operations Officer. Correct. Like I said, acronym title. Uh, but anyway, so last year on his 39th birthday, he asked The Rock to be his friend. And uh, that worked out for him. So this year, he wants to do something a little different. And he's decided that he wants Able Gamers to outlive himself and has set up a big charity drive and he's trying to raise a million dollars and it's for a super good cause and i don't actually work for them i just think they do a really cool thing and i wanted to bring it up um he's also just one of the sweetest people on the internet so if you have no idea who i'm talking about you can look him up we'll have links in in the video description and all that other fun stuff i'll throw it in the in the stream chat and we'll put it in the discord and all that good stuff too but cool guy really good uh organization and hey the guy's trying to raise some money for so that everybody can play video games, which I think is one thing we can all agree on. If you can't, for some reason, find the links down below if you're watching this live, just go to ablegamers, ablegamers.com and it should pop right up. Cool. Thank you for that. Yeah, David, it's a really cool thing. I wanted to say he, he threw it out on Twitter um, earlier this afternoon and I just had to bring it up because I don't know, that guy's rad. We have two upcoming events this week that you need to keep an eye out for. First is the PlayStation 5 Showcase, which is going to broadcast live this Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I will be co-streaming that event. I fully expect to have the actual price and date reveals for the PlayStation 5 itself, as well as hopefully whatever games are going to be at launch. I think it's going to run 40 minutes, and they are not, they are not going to devote 40 minutes just to giving a price. So I do expect some other news to come out from that as well. Additionally, this Friday, September 18th at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time is the third episode of Night City Wire. That is essentially the Cyberpunk 2077 Direct. You will be able to find out what happens then because, well, I'm not going to be streaming at 9 a.m. I have other things to do. David. Yes. That stuff is, it's like 18 hours away. That's I, need some, I need something to keep myself occupied for these 18 hours between now and then. What can I play that came out this week? All right. Uh, a few things are coming out this week, and we are going to start the list off with uh, Vaporum. There's no I. I keep wanting to call it Vaporium, but it's just Vaporum, colon, lockdown. For PC and Mac, this is a first-person RPG in the like Grimlock, 
Grimrock style, if that helps you. Yeah. Uh, Steam, steampunk first person RPG. You know, you're kind of going straight through rooms. You fight things. It's a grid based dungeon crawler in a steampunk setting inspired by old school classics. You're playing a character named Ellie Teller, a scientist struggling to survive disastrous events that happened in the Tower of Arx Vaporum. David, I loved the old gold box D and D SSI games that all played like this, where it was, you have like this grid based 3d look and you moved along the grid and it was all turn based legend of Grimlock. No idea. This. If you have no idea what we're talking about and you're old enough to remember the old, like windows 95 slash 98 slash 2000 slash NT slash whenever screensaver of the maze. Very similar to that. Then I think of that, but as an RPG that you can play. I will be then make it new. <laughs> I will be playing this tomorrow at 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time right here at Twitch TV slash Game Points because the PR team was kind enough to give us a code for that. So you Look, will be seeing fancy Vaporium here. tomorrow at roughly this time. There you go. We also have Splunky 2 hitting for PS4. I think we talked about this last week because it just came out. It is everything you love about Splunky, but as a sequel. Take all, take all the things you loved about Spelunky and a sequel and combine them together. Yeah, yeah take your favorite parts of Spelunky and a sequel. And dude, that quote was so great. Yeah. Um, I wish I liked Spelunky. I, I can appreciate it being a good game, but it's just not for me. That's fair. It's each their own. Uh, speaking of things that you probably don't appreciate, but it'll still sell well regardless of your feelings, eFootball PES 2021 comes out this week for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. This is the Konami football game or soccer, or whatever the hell you want to call it. Also known this, as just the Konami game now. Yeah, it's basically the only thing they make. It is the last fucking bastion of the Fox engine, which just depresses me to all end all be all. Um, but regardless of what we think about it, this game will sell well. I don't need to explain it to anybody. If you if you like soccer video games, you probably already know that there's BES, and then there's the FIFA. And you know which one you like, so... You have fun. Welcome to Elk comes out for PC and Mac. This is a 2D single player story, like adventure game. It's a biographical adventure set on an island like no other. Wherever character you encounter has a story to tell, from the weird and wonderful to the dark and desperate. All the tales told on Elk are based on true stories of life on the road less traveled. So it's kind of an interesting twist on an adventure game where it takes a bunch of real people's stories and kind of like, I don't know, I'm assuming made for or like based on a true story movie to them into a video game. Mm -hmm. uh farm manager 2020 this one was ridiculous to me it comes out this week for pc this is i uh, remember when we had farming simulator i want to play one of these games one train day train simulator and you had um european bus manager simulator and every other simulator game that we've had this is the whole farm but from a more top-down isometric view and it's not harvest moon because it is a strategy management full-on simulation game about managing of fields and working about worrying about seasons and looking after animals, taking care of machines and and your staff and reacting to the weather and having a farm. You guys have have yourselves a farm. EXP, I'm not exp EXP. What's the dumb name? <laughs> EXP Parasite comes out for PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Mac. This is a retro styled side-scrolling platformer, retro hardcore TD arcade game. So think. Uh, Honestly, gameplay wise, it looks a lot like V V V V V V V V or however many V's that game is. Okay. Where you're where you're kind of falling up and down to the top and bottom of a side scrolling platformer level. A lot of spikes but you're everywhere. Playing, yeah, lots of spikes everywhere. But you're playing as like this little parasite guy. He looks like a rolling brain. And you jump into different mechanical objects. So sometimes you're in like this little helicopter thing, or you're in a little tank thing. So it looks pretty cool, very much retro looking. Uh, so take a look at that. Dog Duty has PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and X. Sorry, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. I think it's already out on PC. This is a top-down RTS shooter strategy game that has serious Metal Slug vibes. Looking at it, like I think I would probably play this over Metal Slug. Mm. Some evil bigwig octopus commander and his army is threatening world peace. It's up to you and your squad of misfits to eliminate the Octo Scum. Liberate outposts, defeat bosses, and wreck those wicked squids up. But beware, they're well armed. Like I said, it's an RTS but with a kind of cool aesthetic. Vampire's Fall Origins hits Xbox One and Switch. This is a uh, another old school RPG, but not the Grimlock style, just a regular old wandering around, getting levels, getting into fights, standing on the left side, fighting the people on the right side, RPG. And you're, in, right. a, you're in a village called Vamp 
vampire. Vampire. All right, we're done. Yeah. Let's move on to the next one. Pacer. <laughs> that's, that's all I need to know. The second yeah. you said that, I immediately stopped caring. I know. <laughs> Pacer. It's PS4, Xbox One, and PC. This game has been in early access since 2017. Um, but this is pretty damn cool because it is a... Yeah, I'm going to use it. Wipeout-like. Since there's no... Okay. Uh, since there's no F Zero games, I guess I just have to use Wipeout for I guess. high speed sci fi racing games where you're playing as some kind of anti gravity car th thing. Um, there's a full campaign mode, single player race, there's explosive online multiplayer, and it is a, like I said, high speed sci fi combat racer. The Dungeon of Oof. Nahel Bayak. Nahel Bayak? Nahel Bayak. The Amy Little Chaos. Uh, the Amulet of Chaos. If you Google that, you'll probably find it. PC. Uh, it comes out this week on PC. This is a strategy RPG set in a wacky, heroic fantasy universe of dungeons of word I can't pronounce. Lead a team of unlucky and clumsy heroes in an epic and challenging tactical RPG. Live an adventure filled with humor, surprises, and silly encounters. It's kind of a RPG heavy week. It's interesting. Uh, Gordsd. Gordsd. I don't like the name. G-O-R-S-D. Yeah, I don't think i can pronounce that anyway ps4 xbox one switch and pc this is a pvp top-down shooter one to four player arena combat there you go have, have uh it, it kind of has a retro like uh 2d maybe 16 bit aesthetic wwe 2k battlegrounds comes out for ps4 xbox one switch and pc this is a wrestling video game people like wrestling uh this is a new one i will <laughs> always Ever since that one uh, wrestling game came out a few years ago, make sure you check out reviews. Yeah, like absolutely. Rest wrestling based video games because a year or two ago we had one came up that was so bad that people were comparing it to like the N64 version. And the N64 version fucking looked better. And played better. Yeah. Huge technical issues. I don't know that this is the same team. I could just be an asshole right now, but... If you're interested in a wrestling video game, please do your research because I'm not going to do it for you. The <laughs> Secret Order 8 Return to the Buried Kingdom hits PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. This, I think, we have the words for it, so I can describe it simply. This is a hidden object adventure game. Okay, I was wondering how they could have had seven other of these goddamn things, and I have yet to hear of a single one of them. I know a guy who's really big into these hidden object games. I need to hit There you go. So it is an adventure game. So think of an old-style adventure game where you're on a single screen, and you're basically trying to click on stuff and get items. It's and pixel click hunter. on stuff on your inventory, and then click on stuff in the room again to see if anything works. It is a hidden object adventure game. So have fun with us. Basically, riddles and secrets and stuff that makes regular people just go insane. All right. Uh, Tamiku hits PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. This is a platformer arcade where you're trying to break balloons. This looks like an NES game. Action packs platformer yeah. where you're... It, it, I don't know. It looks super retro. I don't know if this is like a finally released game because we've had a few of those. I've never heard of Tamiku. But if you're into more retro style plat arcade platformers, there you go. Crisis Remastered hits PS4, Xbox One, and PC. This is an epic exclusive. I always got to throw that out. It's Crisis. Uh, again, I don't think it'll destroy your computer because last I checked, this bitch runs on Switch nowadays. I don't want to spend money on this, but I do want to take a look at it just out of curiosity because the original Crisis was, if you could actually play it, was a really cool goddamn game. It starts off as a military shooter. Like, like, think like a grounded military shooter that descends into pure goddamn anarchy by the end of the game as a four-way war breaks out on this island. It's really cool. I, I'm definitely, definitely into it. Cool. But I don't um, know if I'm going to get the remastered version. I don't think I ever... I never played Crisis. I yeah, had it, Crisis Wars installed on my computer because I had a Battletech mod put over it. Cri the crisis starts off reminding me a little bit like any Tom Clancy or Ghost Recon game. To where it's like, okay, infiltrate this camp and you don't want to set off all the alarms, but you can do some cool shit like super jump and everything like that. But as that game progresses, it gets more and more, just like I said, chaotic. Because it goes from being kind of like a play, that you can play it like a quasi-stealth game, into, alright, you're in the middle of a Call of Duty now. Interesting. As, as events progress. I don't necessarily want to give away the ghost of the plot, despite it being so old, because it did just get a remaster, and you might be playing it for the first time. Cool. Uh, speaking of things that are old 
A Harvest Moon Light of Hope comes out for Xbox One this week. This has been out since like 2017. I don't know has it really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it was on the list. It's a Harvest it was Moon. A, yeah, yeah. It's a Harvest Moon game. It was the 20th anniversary game that came out. Uh, it's been on PC for a while. People like it. It's a Harvest Moon game. It's not the like app-driven phone game Harvest Moon game that I make fun of all the time. This is like a. It's a Harvest Moon game. If you have no idea what that is. It's a cartoony farm you played, simulator you, you know y'all know stardew valley your kids play that stardew valley this is your the game kids. that it was based off of uh, right uh we also have commandos 2 getting an hd remaster that's out this week for ps4 and xbox one this is a stealthy real-time strategy that you've probably played and probably talked about more than i can commandos is really goddamn good uh it is a lot if you were if you had yeah excuse me if you guys were around a couple weeks ago when i was playing through desperados 3 this is the world war 2 version of desperados there you go. The World War II version of Desperados. They should put that on the box. They should. And last but not least, well, actually probably just last because this comes out on Friday, Super Mario 3D All-Stars hits Switch. Um, this is the collection of Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy coming to your Nintendo Switch console, handheld, whatever the hell that thing is, um, later this week. If you are... Man, do I need to describe what Mario games are? I don't think I do, right? No, nah, no, nah, but it's Mario 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy, so it contains uh, two of the three greatest Marios of all time. This also has had all kinds of people being mad at it because, like, Mario 64 is not upscaled enough, or what? I don't give a shit. It's, it's the only way you can play these games again without busting out some old-ass AV cables. And yes, the guy that complained about optical is going to make fun of AV cables. But last I checked, my TV still has AV inputs, so checkmate whoever i'm mad checkmate at. nerds <laughs> uh, uh i can legitimate still, complaint that i can see a against nintendo 64 this. or a nintendo gamecube into my tv and play games they might look really 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 damn bad because of the way that stuff works but... not, not only that but if you, if you try to plug a wii into like a 4k tv there's some major interface issues yeah uh it's there's all kinds of weird stuff you kind of need a converter and it's uh, a little rough the only major that complaint that I, I can think of... I don't have a Nintendo 64 and a copy of Super Mario 64 lying around anywhere. So if I really wanted to play it, hey, look, there's a game for that. The only major complaint that I can think of with this collection is that Galaxy 2 isn't on here. Yep. It's just Which Galaxy we 1. But Seems Mario great. Galaxy is amazing. Sunshine is, in my opinion, the greatest Mario 3D game of all time. And Mario 64 is... Well, it's Mario 64. I was never a fan, but I get why people love it. Infamous. If nothing else... This will probably make watching speedruns of these games more interesting if they're going to be played on this hardware. We'll see if they did any Maybe. changes to, to actually ruin any run strats. Well, we'll find out. And, uh, from what I understand, it, 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 the entirety of the game has already been leaked online, and they found what emulators it was running on because they're just emulated versions of it. They aren't the actual source That's code. That's exactly the how the Super Nintendo Classic and then the yep. NES Classic and all that stuff works. It's just an emulator. Wasn't that, that thing they've been yelling at people to not do this entire time? They just did. Didn't wasn't there some story where it turns the out PlayStation they... Classic used an open source version That's of a was. PlayStation emulator by contacting one specific member of the development team and not the entirety of the development team, and he said it was okay, but the rest of the team really didn't. And then Sony went on to make no money at all on that damn thing, so it didn't matter because no one gave a shit about the PlayStation. Yeah, I was going to say there was some as, news story somewhere. As about cool it. as Sony is, sorry guys, you do not have the nostalgia power of Nintendo. No. David, also, you should, have, you should have picked better games. Absolutely. David, that does it for new releases, which means we are at the end of the show. This oh, no. has been Game Points episode 232, and thank you all for showing up. We will be back again next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time right here at Twitch TV slash Game Points, where we hope you join and be participative in the chat, like Ignis, Fuse, and everyone else lurking at the moment. If you can't catch us live, however, you can always watch old episodes of the show over at youtube.com slash GamePointsPC. You can join the Discord server link provided down below, regardless of where you're watching at. I will be streaming tomorrow the Sony PlayStation 5 Showcase at 1 p.m. And then later that night at 9 p.m., I'll be st streaming Vaporium, as well as regular shows throughout the week. You can follow the show on Twitter at GamePointsPC. You can follow Dave over there at PalShife underscore Satori. And myself, Stephen Brown, at CapitalistPig21. Thank you all for showing up. Once again, this has been GamePoints. Until next time, we're out of here.